Alright hey guys, here we are, the free to play account. Here you can see where we're leaving off. So just wanted to update you. I did play hole one yesterday. It went just into the rough and I wasn't able to uh, get the eagle. So I basically just sat out and want to give this one another try. So I was surprised to see the ball carry as far as it did with my last adjustment. So we'll try to make just a little tweak. We'll also have to pay attention to where the wind is. So yesterday I had a seven. So far it's a little bit less. It's very tough when you just aim over here to get this to curl hard enough. So not the easiest thing to do. I would imagine opponent most likely is going to be on the other side too far to the right. Not even they're not even curling it, so I would imagine it's gonna be headed towards the sand. Sure enough. We're gonna try our hook again. So 6.2, probably going to do the exact same thing. I'll just go full. I can't believe how far that ball flew yesterday. It's like a glitch. It was like a glitch. So I don't even think it's going to be even remotely close to that today. I don't even know how it went as far as it did. It was just crazy. I mean, the ball shouldn't have been, it shouldn't have carried even remotely to where it did off the tee. But uh, here you can see it's coming in. We're going to be up here by the fringe. And, you know, hopefully just, uh, you know what, I forgot to put the down and one on again. Or no, I think I have it. I should have it. So it should be able to down and one from there. And that's kind of the goal is I'm just going to try to get it down there on the flat and just take my chances with the down and one. It is going to be my ideal way of playing this one. Looks like opponent's actually able to roll that in. It's two in a row. Surprise, you know, guys making that from the sand. Especially two in a row. Tough thing to do. But we should easily get our eagle here. Basically just play enough wind to run it into the stick. Kind of like this. Great ball either way should still go in. So sure enough, there it is. We got our eagle. Tough with a sniper seven here. You almost don't have enough spin. So it looks like when he clubbed down, he didn't change the change his spin. You can see that's going to go into the sand. As I mentioned, you know, this is a tough shot with a seven. I'll try to land down here somewhere. So we're just going to short hit a sniper here, just run it down the hill. And all in all, not too bad. But uh, good luck with that hole, guys. Um, should be relatively straightforward if you can get that hook pulled off. And a very good opportunity. So I will catch you guys on the next one and see you there. All right, here we are, guys. Hole two. I'm either thinking Quasar or Sun 
something similar, Quasar, I'm thinking, for this one. And we're just going to try to do very similar to what I showed you guys last time. So sure enough, that does take the slope up there. It's not the ideal way to play it, um, in my opinion, because it just, you know, it tends to come down that slope all different. You can see that the green's very up and down. So it means that getting it on that perfect, perfectly groove is going to be a little challenging. Now, what we're going to try to do here is a side spin shot. You try to land somewhere in here. You can see I actually got kind of one of the one of the larger winds making this shot just a little bit tougher. This is actually as large as a wind as I could possibly get. So it is going to kind of dictate how I play this a little bit. I still play pretty close to max, typically. I might come in on it a little bit. I'm thinking eight rings. So eight rings. Perfect ball. And just a bit outside, probably just end up going the 8.5 next time. <clears throat> but all in all, not a bad uh, attempt there. You got to start somewhere, so basically just using that as kind of a uh, start point for this. And, you know, with that, especially when the wind's super high, you know, that wind effect is kind of at an all-time high. So you do, you do need to just factor in just a little bit more. And I was just a little bit light on my wind effect play. But should be able to roll this in. And should have a pretty good chance on this hole. We'll see. I know I do. I know I'm going to be close to the max. Still want to go off this island, but I'm going to be very close to the max. It is going to make the shot just a little bit tougher, but I should be able to pull it off. It's, it's much more consistent than trying to land up where my opponent is. Very challenging land zone to hit. Uh, the fairway's all over the place. You need to be very exact with the way that you know. There's no telling how it's going to bat, bounce um, unless you really hit that slope absolutely how you're trying to, and you can see. As a result, opponent just kind of shoots well out towards the left. So always want to go off this island, even if you have to go into power. So I will be close to the max line. And we'll try to play the wind effect a little bit. So similar to this. Three, three and a... Just Almost four, maybe just a little bit light of four, kind of similar to this here. 8.5 rings. Maybe even nine rings. Let's see how much power I'm going to need. Perfect ball. Just shooting it up towards the hole. <clears throat> just a little bit short it's almost a little bit too much backspin but all in all not bad so you can see you're able to uh, get that one to pull off so good luck with that second hole guys and I will catch you guys on three momentarily all right hey guys here we are hole three and we're gonna play this very similar to the way that you saw me play it in my pro guide we're just going to play it essentially just safely. Um, I do like having that curl aspect. So without something like an apocalypse, I'm not going to try to force the issue with extra mile and try to bend the tree or anything. It's just too risky of a shot. I just want to foremost be in play and give myself a chance at this hole as opposed to trying to do too much.
Now the one thing I may need on this one is the Guardian. You know, I may have to actually switch my bag because I didn't set my clubs up right. I don't think I have a bag with how I want. Uh, I'm not sure Sniper works. I can't remember. I may need just a little bit more spin. We'll try it. And if this isn't how we want, we'll have to make an adjustment in the future days. So what I'm going to try to do is land somewhere up here, a little bit of curl. So I'm thinking six-ish rings, maybe seven, seven rings, a little bit of curl, kind of like this, perfect ball. Just need to get it past those shadows. Looks like we're able to do so. And the, the more towards the right that we keep it, the easier this approach will be. I may not be able to, to land on this front with only four bars of backspin, though. So I may need to you know consider that for my next playthrough. We'll just have to see how this comes in and how this sets up. And of course, the Guardian should give me a, a relatively good chance here on the uh, shootouts as well. You know, it'll make sure that I do have enough spin. So it may be smarter than bringing this. So it looks like we are okay. We can go off the front. This may make it just a tiny bit more holdable. You can see that I'm just going to need, um, beyond the normal ring adjustment, we'll have to do a little bit of curl since we're kind of off to the side a little bit. Now I'm gonna use the max ring number. Well, just gonna essentially go one per. And then also just a touch of curl. And I caught a great ball. Should be okay though. Um, you know, I'm just assuming that it's going to come in just a little bit left. Sure enough, with the perfect ball, you know, good chance that uh, we can get the albatross. So hopefully you guys are able to get that. Um, good luck with that hole. And uh, let's see what we can get for the shootout here. See if we can't take care of business. So this is going to be a tough wind with a tailwind. Looks like we got the tailwind. So we almost have to land on the front with a with a sniper seven. You also see what I do with the ball guide. Just kind of hit it off to the side a little bit. But we are going to need to land on this front a little bit. So you can see that it is going to come in just a little bit hot. But mastering that ball guide offset is going to um, be the ticket. Um, with my first attempt there, I wanted to make sure that I did avoid the... Uh, make sure that I definitely avoid the rough. So I wanted to, you know... I. I could have got that just a little bit shorter, and that's what I'll probably do next time if I get a tailwind like in that same scenario. But you'll see that you know you do got a reasonable chance to get it in there close. Now let's see what opponent can do here. Uh, very tough going off that fairway. You know I've mentioned it several times. Uh, you know I, I I can't believe that this is like a thing. 
that guys actually go off there intentionally. Like it's just very hard to control. You have to be exact with the with where it lands for you to hit a perfect shot. And as you can see, uh, long into the rough. But uh, good luck there, guys, and I will see you guys on the next one. All right, here we are, guys. Hole four. And we'll have to just see what we want to do here. This is a tough wind. So ideally, um, you know, we may need to go Titan Ball just to make things just a little bit easier. Distance wise, I'm not sure what that was. Some of the guys you play on Qualifier Day, it's like, is he even trying? Like, I don't even know. Let me just drop from the Wi-Fi. I don't care to play on. So we are going to be pulling up towards max. Other than that, try to keep it through the hole a bit. So similar to this. And I'm thinking somewhere in the neighborhood of almost eight rings here. Oh, I mentioned this last time. Need to make sure that I rotate this way and we'll pull up eight rings essentially which is right on the edge of there perfect ball looks just a bit outside so we'll just have to tweak that ball guide just a little bit but uh you got the gist of what we're trying to do um we'll just have to Try to hone in on that. A couple more attempts. You know, may be able to uh, pull that off. <clears throat> so let's see what opponent does here. From the sand. Going to require a perfect ball, but it doesn't look like he played the wind. So I would imagine this will be hard to make. Even with a perfect, it would have probably, you know, been on the right edge, I would imagine. He was trying to curl it, but I don't know if it was enough. It may have been. But uh, good luck with that hole, guys. And I will see you guys on five coming up. All right, here we are, guys. Back for another guide. So biggest thing here is going to be perfect ball or at least keeping it in the fairway more so than anything. So we are going to try to go into some power here. I'm thinking of maybe landing somewhere up on this plane with just a little bit of curl. So the way that you're going to need to play it is going to be dependent upon the uh, wind that you get as well. So you can see that I had a 6 mile per hour wind. It's going to play different than a 7, going to play different than a 5. So keep that in mind. There you can see we almost got up to the edge. A little bit tougher to do with extra mile, not recommended. Um, you know, you don't want a great ball being the reason that you mess this hole up. So with a great ball with a quarterback, there's a good chance that I'll still hold the fairway. With the extra mile, who knows? Maybe. But not worth, not worth typically uh, risking, just in case. So, so far, okay, but it may... Oh, no, he didn't use very much topspin, so he should be good. So let's take a look here. Good opportunity. Take advantage of this. I'm thinking somewhere around here. You get about five rings here on the adjustment. Perfect ball. And 
just, just a hair short. But it looks like it may have just caught the rough ed right edge and not missed, not went in anyway. But uh, as you can see, you know, a very good opportunity for us. <clears throat> So there you can see, um, you know, didn't really, you know, I did that yesterday. You, you know, you got to keep that ball guide to the right because the, the wind effect is a little bit to the left and it is pulling the balls. So it is something that you just got to be just a little bit cautious with. Oh, wow. Didn't expect that. So, bad break there. But, um, you know, good luck with that fifth hole, guys. And I will, I will see you guys on six momentarily. All right, so here we are, guys. Back for hole number six. Not sure exactly how I want to do this with my QB being a little bit shorter. I do feel like playing this one maybe just a little bit more aggressive. Of course, we did get a win that's up a little bit. But I do want to make sure that I thread this through here very well and hopefully not clip the rough. Now, I am going to pull back just a little bit. It's not going to be that much. So my normal ring adjustment would be here. Um, I am going to, you know, aim here. But I am going to pull up just a little bit just to kind of keep some of that distance. Just to get me a couple extra yards. Ah, oh, did clip the rough, man. So that's okay. Um, you know, we should be pretty close to max. And we should still be able to still make that. But it is something that I want to work on. Just kind of threading through there without clipping that. And the biggest key... You know, I do like to put that left spin on. It creates kind of that nice angle to where it's kind of going up the tree line, like pointed to the left to kind of make sure that you kind of create a nice angle going through there. I'm just going to have to just minorly tweak my uh, adjustment there to make sure that I don't clip that rough when I try it like that. You can see this one goes all the way into the sand. You want to avoid that sand. Um, it's about basically the worst place you can be. Uh, because of the fact that, uh, you know, you're kind of taking yourself out a little bit. So I'm going to be kind of towards mid club. And what that typically will mean for me is three ish per ring or so. So I'm thinking somewhere around here, three, three something. Maybe about, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, two rings here are very close. The two rings on the adjustment. And we got our perfect. So let's see if they give it to us. And sure enough, right into the hole. So we got our eagle. And we're going to have a decent qualifier, which is nice. So very good opportunity. You know, just getting through there, getting through the trees. Keeping it in the fairway is going to be the uh, biggest key. But this should take a little bit of pressure off this guy. He could still potentially get this to roll in. So that looks pretty good alignment-wise. They just kind of shouldn't be curling this whatsoever. That, that would have had very little um, wind, but um, that needed to be played there at all. But, uh, you know, good luck there, guys. With that six hole, you'll see um, relatively good chance there. Hopefully you guys are able to get that one and get a good score going. So good luck, and I will see you guys on 7 momentarily. All right, hello, everyone. Here we are, hole 7. 
I'm going to try another attempt at this one. So big thing for me is I'm going to use QB Navigator, very similar to my guide from the other day. Decent amount of tournaments, decent amount of finishes. Almost all top tens. That is a risky shot. So as you can see, you have you'd have to get very close to the rough there. That's too much rings, I would imagine. I can't see. It's almost so this person is most certainly playing on the computer. But that is a very risky adjustment. Um, you end up getting pretty close to the edge. I'm going to play it uh, off this fairway time and time again. And with the QB, we're usually talking about maybe just a little bit of backspin. I'll typically go maybe about five rings here. For a six, which is kind of like a min club adjustment. And not enough backspin. It, well, it or, you know, the way that it hit that slope was just a little bit, a little bit not what we were looking for. So it just kind of hit that uh, hill wrong and didn't glide up it. But, uh, you know, with just a minor tweak, that, that's kind of the problem with playing that base slope there is you kind of never know if are you going to get that run out bounce like that or is it going to come in the way that it's supposed to. And the difference between getting it to land perfect, you know, if you try to crank the backspin up more, uh, you know, you could potentially end up uh, short. So you do want to avoid doing that because you want to make sure that the ball does still roll out and you just got to hope that you don't get that, uh, that crazy scoop bounce where it just goes through the pin. But uh, good luck with that hole, guys. <clears throat> so what I'll typically do here is just a backspin shot. I try to master wind effect more so than anything here. So I'm just going to be looking for distance control. So you can see with what I'm doing with my ball guide. And pretty close to a max ring adjustment. Just missed. So very close attempt there. Much tougher to do with Big Dog, that's for sure. But still doable. Um, you know, you would just kind of have to replicate. Um, I would say, you know, using that backstop, it's going to be hard to ever stop the ball close. That's one of the biggest reasons to not do that shot, you know, down the hill. Because you typically won't be able to stop it nearly as well. So just rolling through a bit much there. So
So good luck with that hole, guys. And I will see you guys momentarily on hole eight. All right, hey guys, here we are, hole number eight. Now, what I choose to do on this hole, not really sure. If I had an extra mile six, I'd probably be more comfortable with a Titan. Um, at the very least, I would at least set it up, no matter what. With a Berserker, but I feel like, I feel like I'm going to need the Berserker. So, I may even need just a little bit of power here, to be honest. So, I'm going to play the wind first. Maybe just a tiny bit of power. We'll just see how... Ah, uh, did not want that great ball, though. So, I do believe that's going to make it lean. May still need just a touch, a touch more power than that. With the perfect ball, that may have actually been on the green. So... Missing the perfect ball definitely ended up costing me. So a little unfortunate there, but you can see, uh, you know, much easier with the, the six here. You can, uh, I think it's about six, is it eight yards difference? So could potentially, uh, I'm not sure what exactly this person's doing. Uh, okay, so all he was doing was playing the wind. And um, he's also going power. I would imagine this is going to be too much. I mean, you would think from looking at my shot that there's no way you would need to use all that. And sure enough, that's going to be into the sand. Um, you know, I had eight yards less and we did about the exact same shot. So with eight yards less, yeah, sure, that's fine. But um, definitely going to be too much otherwise. Now, what I'm going to try to do is essentially land the third bounce kind of right towards the hole. And if I get my perfect ball, you know what, I imagine that I make the shot. So there, sure enough, got the perfect and right into the hole for eagle. So, let's see what my opponent does. See if he can, also probably going to need perfect ball. There's a chance that you can maybe get a great ball. Um, I mentioned this in another one of my streams. There's kind of a spot up here. This is like overkill. I mean, you can see the shot is only about eight yards here. Um, so what I like to do is I like to land up here. There's kind of a spot that if you maybe great ball it, it'll kind of just hit the hill and kick off. I actually made one. I forget what division it might, it was either pro or expert, I believe, where I hit a great ball and I still was able to make it. Um, when you do it like this, you're probably going to need your perfect ball at the very least. And then also plus good alignment. Um, otherwise, you're going to see that it just kind of drifts off the cup, sort of like that. So, um, you know, always put it on the green. Never put it on to the uh, fair, fairway or fringe unless you absolutely, absolutely have to. As long as you can get the spin worked out on the green, definitely use the green. Getting your perfect ball is going to definitely kind of ensure that you uh, make that one. So good luck there, guys. And uh, see you guys on the next one. All right, here we are, guys. I'm back for another tutorial here for the free to play hole nine. And we'll see what we can do on this one. A couple different things to think about. You know, distance may come into the equation, so I may use the extra mile. Um, I don't see distance really being. The reason that I mess up here, um, but even if you do go long, it's not necessarily a problem. So you'll just want to uh, make sure A, it's in the fairway or hits the fairway on the first hop. That's the big thing. And then anything else is just kind of supplemental because even if I go long there, um, I would imagine I'll still be able to get this one. So. With that in mind, 
You know, I got to either go with this or the extra mile for the extra few yards. And if I can just get it to land around there, that's all I really need. So maybe just a little bit of backspin. Just a tiny bit of power as well. So did catch a great ball. As I mentioned though, um, the biggest thing is just making sure that I catch that fairway on that first stop and we should be good to go. All we're doing is playing for eagle here. So not trying to force too much to happen. Just get the ball in play. Fairway would be ideal, but not essential. So next is, you know, just don't try to get too aggressive with this. There's no reason to shoot for the pin. You know, just kind of be happy with getting it to roll up like that. So if it was me, I wouldn't try to do anything supplemental here. Um, it's, it's, it's almost unholdable. So to even go for anything else um, other than, you know, just the center of the green is just too, too aggressive. So that's all I recommend is just, you know, hitting it up there and just taking your eagle. So that's all we're going to do here. Just full back spin it. Check out what the ball guide looks like. And essentially just going to hit for this right here. Have a six ring adjustment or so. <clears throat> Let's get it to come around and sit up here close and we should easily have this putt. And sure enough, roll in the eagle. Just secure that. The last thing you want to do is give up a birdie there. That is the toughest, probably the toughest hole on this setup in terms of like technically what you need to do. So you'll just want to be very cautious. And with the extra mile, that's going to make things just a little bit tougher here. Well, I'll typically do. Maybe play the min club number here. Play just a little bit of backspin. I'm thinking somewhere in the neighborhood of three-ish rings for this adjustment. And then of course, always the wind effect. So you'll want to make sure that uh, you are playing that nice wind effect and it looks like it's just coming up a bit short. Can be a little bit technically challenging on this hole um, because you never know if you're going to get that scoot through bounce. As you can see, I didn't get it there, but um, it's always a risk that it could happen. So if you go for this rough bump here, you're going to have to just land, you know, pretty pretty perfect um, it is you know a little bit aggressive and, and you're probably going to need perfect ball with an extra mile that's one of the main reasons that I didn't go for it is because there's more margin for error the way that I did it um, and this is going to have to be essentially probably pretty perfect like great ball left is going to be no good and I'm assuming this may even stay up in the rough like that's how like come all it might come all the way back down so um, very tough. You got to be very exact when you try to do that shot there. Um, very challenging. And as you can see, um, just not able to perfect pull off the perfect. And that's one of the main reasons that I don't try to get 
too aggressive, especially going first, because if I was to hit that shot going first, all my opponent would have to do is just literally just hit it up there. But you can see I got it to the 15 under number. So there's actually somebody in my division here. They actually are basically just, you know, staying in pro for whatever reason. Um, you know, this, this goes to show you that, you know, there's just people out there that are extremely awkward, like, because you don't want to stay in pro, um, you know, or rookie for this matter. You can see he probably has like extra mile eights, like, like that's, that's one of the main reasons to get out of those early tours is to actually develop your clubs. So as soon as I can get out of pro, that's what I'm going to do. But you can see, you know, I got a really nice tiebreaker here with the minus 15 under. Um, and if you want to see with where I'm at, you know, I've only played one pro tournament. This is going to be my second. As soon as I play this second one, I've, I've already mentioned to you guys, you know, my, my strategy is to get to expert as soon as possible. So as soon as I, you know, collect some balls from this tournament and um, basically, uh, you know, keep this account progressing, you can see I'm starting to get just a little bit tighter on Titan, so I do want to win some, but I'm also getting some of these Kingmakers. So what I'm going to plan to do is just get these uh, Kingmakers and Titans from this tournament and then go straight to expert with this account so we can unlock uh, Apocalypse, Cataclysm, and start developing those clubs as well. So you'll see all those Tour 7s are still locked except for Nirvana. It's the only one that I have. And if you want to unlock those, the secret to doing so is expert tournaments. Um, since I'm not paying money whatsoever, that means I'm not getting the chance on the Golden Shot, which is another good place to win. And um, other than that... You know, these Tour 7 chests that you get from time to time, as you can see, I'm not getting them now. But if you're getting those Tour 7 chests, um, you know, your probability of unlocking it is going to be smaller until you hit that 3,900 trophy count. So if you're not a 3,900 trophy count player, your best bet is to go to the expert tournament. Uh, you know, I find expert to actually be easier than pro because we get the little bit larger tailwinds. We can play a little bit more aggressively. We don't have to worry about small wins keeping us from hitting the shots. Like let's look at hole eight, for example, where I had to use power with a little bit larger wind. I could go no power. So it's that much easier to hit perfect ball. So those are the types of things that, uh, you know, you want to be thinking about and as to why, you know, looking ahead towards expert is the thing to be doing because uh, there's just kind of no reason of kind of staying back here into these. Uh, all you're doing is preventing your clubs from progressing faster. So do keep that in mind. Good luck with your rounds out there, guys, and uh, be on the lookout for the um, updated opener when I uh, get the time to shoot that. So if you have a similar account, you know, this is going to be a good tournament for you to just check out these alternate shots. Good luck out there, guys.